Hi there, this is Brett Senkis, the Right Brain Business Lawyer, and thank you for joining me in another video in our series of Mastering Business Partnerships. Today we're going to talk about something I call the capital and calories problem, or dilemma. And business is people, right? When you're in business, you're dealing with people all the time, and people are emotional and unique and confusing at times and unpredictable. We all are but we're also highly predictable in certain ways. There's certain human emotions or, and motivations that are uh, universal. And one of the strongest human motivations, I believe, uh, drivers, uh, something you could just take to the bank, is that we all want what we can't have, and we overvalue the things we don't have that we want. We undervalue and take for granted that which we do, you know, the things we have. So capital and calories, refers to, in the case of capital, money. And calories refers to labor. So every business to thrive, to succeed, needs plenty of both. They need plenty of labor and effort, they need plenty of money. Those are the two resources a business needs. Now, when an entrepreneur who doesn't have any money wants to start a business, they're going to highly value the capital piece, right? They'll do anything to get a check. They don't have any money, they need money, they're gonna obsess and crave and overvalue it. On the other hand, they have a lot of time and they will undervalue their time and their effort at this point. This problem, by the way, is exacerbated in that they don't have the money and, they, and they're about to get it now and the effort we're talking about is expended over the long haul. So we tend to make decisions for the short run and value things in the short run as humans like um, a piece of chocolate cake rather than going to the gym because it's got immediate gratification, right? So not only are you overvaluing in this case the money you don't have, but that money's gonna arrive right now. So the problem would be a little less of one if I had to do the work today to go get the check. But when you're raising money for a business, you just get the check and then you have to do the work. So this problem comes up in, you see it in a lot of different contexts, but I'm gonna just kinda of outline one and um, something I've seen quite a, quite a few times is where the entrepreneur gives away way too much of the company up front for the amount of money they're raising and the valuation. So for example, I had an entrepreneur in my office uh, trying to raise some money who had given up half their company in the very first round for a couple hundred thousand dollars. So it's not uncommon for me to find an entrepreneur who struck a deal like that, who gave away half their company up front because they really valued the capital, because they didn't have the capital and they needed it now, and they undervalued all that work they were gonna put in after the fact. So in that case, there's not a lot of good solutions later on. Sometimes the entrepreneur has to go back and try and renegotiate that deal with the investor, who I can promise you is gonna think, but that's the deal you cut. Right? Look at it from their perspective. They're thinking, that's the deal. But you're thinking four, five, six years in, this isn't fair, it's all my work, right? Every year, and it starts to be very demotivating. You're very disincented. This is a problem that savvy investors understand, which is why they would never take half of your company. They're not gonna walk into this problem. If the amount of money you're raising and the valuation of the company don't justify that amount of money, uh, for, for more like 20% of the company, then they're just not gonna do the deal. They'll walk away from it. It just doesn't make sense to take half your company. It's not a situation that's set up for success for anyone. Now, let me distinguish though, this is a problem I'm describing the context of running a business for you know the mid to long term. If what we have here is me coming to you with a short term opportunity, I've identified some asset we can buy that's below market and I say, I don't have any money, I found this opportunity, it's a mine only, Would I if I bring you in, how much do you want? And you say 50%, well that's a different deal. That's a totally different deal because there's not that much labor on this deal. The problem comes in, fundamentally, the capital and calories problem comes in, in the fact that entrepreneurs up front don't value, they're just not thinking about all that work and how this deal's gonna feel in a couple of years. So ways to deal with that issue, right? Let's say you still need money and the valuation of your company doesn't, that you could justify doesn't really, you know, you're in a, you're in a, a, a world where you have to give up something like that amount of money for someone, or someone offers that to you, let's say. So <clears throat> let me give you four ways you could address it. The first is just don't take the money, right? If you just don't do that deal. And again, a savvy investor shouldn't want you to do that deal unless they're really trying to take your company or they've got some ulterior motive. And that's not, 
I mean, most investors have other things to do in the world. So, so maybe you have to look for more savvy capital is number one. See if you can't justify a valuation that uh, with that person that gives up less of your company. You, you maintain more of it. Number two, you could think about doing a, a tiered investment. So instead, if you need a half a million dollars to execute your plan, maybe you just get a quarter of a million dollars. Maybe you give up 25% of your business rather than 50. And after performing a certain, after hitting certain milestones, you go back and you get more money at a different valuation. That's something you can think about. You, you tier your investments. And that, by the way, is why technology startups typically invest, or typically raise just as little as possible in their friends and family and then their seed round. The idea is they're gonna do multiple rounds. You've seen it many times. It's a predictable path of friends and family, seed, A, B. The point is at each stage of fundraising, the company has achieved more compared to the last round. And so they've de-risked the profile of the business and they're able to justify a higher valuation to give up less money. So you can think about that. Maybe you don't need a half a million dollars today. Maybe you could do this in stages and figure out something else. A third way to address the issue is salary. So it's possible to pull a salary out of your business. Let's say you and I are, uh, I give you 50%, uh, I take 50% of your business for a half million bucks. I'm passive, you're active. We come to a deal that you're gonna get a salary out of the business. That's fair, right? You're working in it. And that's meant to compensate you over time for those efforts. And maybe we say, look, for the first six months, no salary. Or you tell me, look, Brett, I've taken no salary for two years. So I say, okay, I understand you've put in some sweat. But this is a way to make sure that your labor is being compensated uh, separately from your ownership percentage. Now, that's not always easy to do uh, and completely counter the capital and calories problem. The reason is because it would be likely at the time that I'm cutting you a check that any salary that would make you happy is gonna start to look like a little too much from my perspective. But that same salary from your perspective in a few years when that business is killing it, it's gonna look like a pittance. So it's like you still have this issue about over time, does the salary get you everywhere you need to go? Now, sometimes, entrepreneurs and investors are silent about salary, which means there's a lot of flexibility depending on what the corporate law is. Corporations are gonna have certain sort of limitations. Uh, I won't get into the, the nuances of that, but let's just assume that it gives a, an entrepreneur a lot more flexibility to take out whatever salary they can sort of justify. Well, you're setting up another problem there, which is at some point the investor might be upset about the issue they didn't cover, and they might have an expectation that you're, you shouldn't have any salary or that it shouldn't be scaling in any meaningful way, because the more salary you take out, the less profit is there for them to participate in. So salary can be a little bit complicated. If you're able to take the gloves off and have a really open conversation, I always encourage that, then you can really address this thing and explain like salary needs to have expectations about how it would scale over time. Fourth way, and this is a great way to address it, especially if the only check that's in front of you is from your uncle and he has told you he needs half of your business, he doesn't care about this video and he won't watch it, then you can have, you can, you can negotiate a redemption right. So what you do is you say, that's fine, I'll give you half the business, but how about I have a right to buy back all of it for a million bucks in the next two years, or all of it for two million bucks anytime, or 10% of what you own for a half a million bucks. You get all your money back and you're still holding on to a lot of your investment. It, it, this comes in all sorts of different flavors, but you get the idea, which is after I've returned to you, investor, a lot of your investment, let me get some of that back. Even if you're able to buy it back at fair market value, it's just an automatic call right on the investor's interest and it's fair market value. At some point, that's gonna start to feel better than just always slugging it away you know, and only getting 50% of the profit when the investor's passive. So you're building an options to start to get some of your equity back. And fair market value you know, isn't ideal from your perspective. You Generally, you would want a right to buy it back at, at a certain fixed price because in five years, that might look like an absolute, uh, an absolute deal. And investors up front are often in the mindset of, oh, hey, I have 50% of this company. Sure, I'll let you buy back 10% of it for, for the amount of my investment. Right? That looks like a huge, what is that, five times their investment on, on, on that portion. That looks great. You know, they're thinking, I would take that in a heartbeat. But when you're killing it, when that business is going like gangbusters, they won't think of it like that. So once they've earned it. So this is kind of like what we described before with a capital calories problem in, in a way, which is the investor is valuing that return that they don't have today, um, overvaluing it kind of. And they might give you a very good 
they might give you a very good deal. Um, they're undervaluing the likelihood you're going to be able to hit that because they would love to get that kind of a return, right? So you could strike a deal up front to give them a great return, but lock it in. And that's a way to overcome the cap capital calories problem. And that's a way to overcome uh, seller's remorse, you know, issuer's remorse, where you as a company issue some stock in return for just too high of a percentage. So um, the thing to keep in mind is as much as possible, understand that this is a long-term game that the deal you strike today, even though you want it more than anything, you gotta live with for a long time. Know that universally, deals get done in, with angels, friends and family, venture capitalists, I see them all the time. Typically, around, in any given round, the company's gonna give up, the founder's gonna give up 10 to 25% of the business. I mean, it just seems to hold true so often. So if you're giving up 50%, you gotta back up and think, why am I doing this? You're setting yourself up for a situation that's gonna be challenging. You're setting yourself up for a renegotiation or some problems unless you bake in some other solutions. You also, by the way, are not gonna raise another round because venture capitalists or even angel investors who are pretty savvy are gonna realize, look, there's hardly anything to give to me and at some point you're going to be, you're not gonna have the incentive to keep growing the business. So that's the capital and calories problem. Recognize it, deal with it. If you have any questions about it, drop me a line. If you need some help thinking through a capital and calories problem, how to structure some of that stuff, give me a call. Thanks for stopping by today.